Good afternoon, everyone. This is Keith Reed from Device Pilot. And welcome to our webinar on why does IoT need service assurance? So I'm not going to do too much in the way of uh, slideware today. I think uh, I'm going to try and demonstrate uh, this concept by showing you some, some real data from one of our customers. The model we have here is that when you deploy an estate of connected devices to, to deliver some service to your customers, it's important. You know, your business then becomes reliant on the function of that device estate. And you must ensure that that device estate is delivering a certain level of performance. Otherwise, your business is not able to succeed delivering its service to its customers. Today, we're going to use the example of a connected thermostat company. Um, they have a, a benefit, not just their users, who are the, the tenants in, in social housing, but also to their customers, who are the, the, uh, um, the social housing landlords of, of an estate management function of, of monitoring the, the, the health of the tenants and of the buildings uh, by, um, by measuring occupancy levels and humidity levels and detecting damp and mold conditions and these kind of things. All of those benefits are contingent on the devices reporting successfully and doing and doing their job. And so that's a bit we help them with. So the start of any process of understanding your device estate and whether it's it's performing as it's required is is as you might expect a dashboard what is it currently doing um, so here's a live device dashboard showing this estate of devices as you can see there's a few hundred devices around the country and uh, the and we can see, so we can see a map of them we can see the the sort of the, the golden number the first number if you like is the the basic current uptime percentage of the of the device estate clearly for each customer this the exact measurement here is is different uh, uptime percentage typically calculated with a with a timeout as it were with it has the device reported in as expected but the basic premise that uptime percentage becomes the the sort of critical key kpi for most always on iot devices are can maybe chat a little bit later about about the case of non always on but for always on you know there's a question of availability of service which is probably the the first kpi that most people would want to, to think about and uh and one of the things that we think about these kind of kpis is something like uptime percentage is a very powerful and strong way to start in particular reason because it's a KPI that you can slice and dice as I can, as I'll show as we go through this, this demo, that using uptime percentage, both as the top level metric to start with, but then dimensioning it by things allows you to generate actionable insights into the performance. So you can actually, you know, you can work out where your performance is not where it should be. And you can even show and predict effectively what performance gain you would get by making any particular change on a very data driven way. Um, and this kind of maturity of looking at this data, understanding it and being able to not just to sort of see performance, but to see clearly how you can make performance better uh, and by how much is you know, a very powerful feature of service assurance and, and something we think most IoT device estates uh, need to get uh, need to get good at. So this dashboard has a, a few other widgets in particular, see we've, we've chosen a particular customer here. This is not the whole device estate and then broken out the performance by location. Um, so we have a very powerful way just to be able to sort of slice and dice any of these percent, these, these uptime percentages by any other parameter, um, which again allows you to drive into these insights. And we can see both the performance levels, but then also the uh, statistical relevance so the, the darker bars um, in terms of intensity are, are have more devices behind them. Uh, so 
So these dashboards are completely configurable. You can have multiple dashboards. You can edit them. You can build your own KPIs, build your own widgets. This is all, you know, the sorts of thing, anything, anything that customers want to see uh, in terms of, you know, aggregate performance is, is the right way to look at this on a dashboard. So when we want to drill into a bit more detail, we effectively have kind of three levels of uh, of looking at this data, the sort of top level here at the dashboard. Um, we do have a nice detailed uh, way of looking at data, looking at individual devices, which I will come on to. Um, but again, to get to that level, I mean, if you've got a few hundred devices, then maybe going down to a list of devices is, is a reasonable sort of next step. But obviously, you know, our customers have more than that. and and expect to have more than a few hundred devices. And when you get into a few thousand devices, 10,000 devices, million devices, obviously anything that involves a list of devices is not a, not a, 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 a meaningful way of being able to, 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 you know, to understand the data. So we can, you know, we can come here down to this particular um, analysis that we saw on the dashboard. Um, confirm the results, we can have a look at the, we can then select this bar, these 36 devices that, and, and, and then drill down another level down to view. So three levels of visualization, uh, uh, the dashboard, a uh, what we call cohort, the ability to look at the data in a sort of aggregate KPI view, and then down to individual devices here. So these are the 36 devices that make up that KPI on the dashboard. So again, that ability, you know, that's a very powerful thing. It's quite, you can see it was very easy to do. Basically, well, three clicks, I think, if I was being, so you click on the dashboard widget, you click on the bar, and you click drill down, and you're down to here. So you've gone, you know, you've gone from a high level view of the whole device estate boiled down to a single KPI very quickly all the way down to individual devices and their individual telemetry and all the data that they're posting. So I choose one that's posted recently. Then, you know, then we're looking, we're looking at the, you know, the, the full history of all of the data coming off this device. Um, so that ability just to sort of move through those levels very quickly is again, very important to get, you know, the relationship it's important to understand the relationship between the performance you're getting and what your device is doing. Now, in some cases, that will involve you coming in and looking at, at this kind of data in a very specific way. Um, I want to show you an example of a of, of rather than looking at performance on a per device way, how how looking at the performance in the aggregate allows you to make again these actionable insights on, on your on your device estate. So. Um, so we obviously we can break out the uptime percentage by customer. We can also break it out by telemetry though. So we don't have to, we're not just breaking it out by the measurements, uh, by the metadata, but we're also breaking it out by the, by any sort of telemetry data we've got. And in this case, they're reporting the GSM signal strength. I'm just expanding the time range there to get a, uh, um, to get a more complete set of data. Now, you know, as with all data, there's no, there's never perfect correlations, and these are always the interesting things. You know, data never sort of doesn't always conform and fit the exact pattern you're looking at. Um, but what you can see clearly is the is that you know, despite these two large bars of, of performance at some these edge cases here, you can see they're very pale, which means they're they're quite low sample counts. So they're in the data, but they're not statistically relevant. As these bars get darker, these bars get darker. Excuse me. You can see, actually, a relatively clear linear correlation between the signal strength and the uptime percentage. Now, I mean, at some level, this is to be expected. Then you can also see that once the signal strength gets to a certain level, it is no longer correlated with uptime. Um, well. As it happens, I used to be a mobile network engineer, so this is certainly not surprising to me, but it, it probably isn't surprising to anyone. Ultimately, once you have enough mobile coverage, 
then the signal is reliable, or at least it's it reaches a certain level of reliability, and it doesn't really get much more reliable at higher signal strengths. So, okay, so that's kind of expected at some level. But what does this really mean to me? Well, what it means to this customer, and in fact, they're taking action right now to resolve this. So they're on um, uh, non-roaming SIMs predominantly, uh, which is typical because they're cheaper than the roaming sims in terms of and they already they already kind of knew that they had a a problem with cellular coverage uh i think i mentioned so that the device itself is a is a thermostat and it goes in it goes into the heart of buildings obviously in the middle of 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 typically uh you know large um uh social housing estates and, and obviously right into the middle of homes as it were because it's a thermostat so it's uh, it doesn't always benefit from the best cellular coverage, and so it, it's clear that when they install it at a place where there's relatively low coverage, they're going to have these reliability issues. Um, and if you sort of squint your eyes and see this triangle here, the triangle, this is the sort of triangle is it, of of missed performance, of lost performance when they, if in between, if they could get the average performance for these devices, then that triangle there would be the gain in performance they would get over the over their device estate. So, and so what they should be doing is, is yes, they should be swapping to roaming sims, but, but not actually for all these devices because it's not gonna make any difference for any of them. They're not gonna get any, any improved performance because these things are already, these things are not, coverage limited in any way. So they'll be paying extra money and getting no extra customer benefit. Whereas these are the ones they need to swap out. So that's a really clear example of, you know, using the data of your device estate, not only to measure your performance, but to, to generate an insight that allows you to make a change to your configuration of your device estate to improve the performance for, for, you know, for your customer and ultimately uh, you know your cost to serve them, so you now that kind of analysis is 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 very powerful, and it's a central part of how you you know make improvements to device estate. Without doing it based on the data, you're just sort of guessing about these things, or you're trying to do it in sort of little spot check things, or you you're doing it with anecdotal pieces of evidence. You're trying to sort of go through lists of devices or lists of signal strengths. You you, you need this kind of correlation to see whether there is a performance correlation between, in this case, you know, uh, uh, their performance and, and, and signal strength. Um, and when you see it, as I say, it allows you to then create that action. Um, and when they do that, they're gonna roll out the new SIMs in the new year. Um, and I, I hope I'll be able to then come back and, and show a demo of how that change, you know, improve their overall performance numbers. Um, so I think that, uh, so that's a very clear example. <clears throat> right, so uh, for a second uh, example, uh, I'm just gonna have a look at one other uh, customer, one other customer account. So the other case where customers find the ability to monitor performance closely and, and analyze performance uh, very clear is around, um, is around firmware update. So firmware update, you know, so many of our customers are, you know, they're using a very, as much as possible, a very agile approach as much as you can with, uh, with, with embedded devices, and they're wanting to, you know, both improve the performance and deliver bug fixes and improve the functionality of their devices by sending out new firmware as frequently as is reasonable. But obviously, you know, there's a risk there. There's a risk with, with every time you send new firmware, obviously the process itself, a firmware update, 
you know, it's getting pretty reliable these days with with many uh, good solutions for you know doing the remote firmware update. But there's a second issue, which is the one people are, fo are using Device Pilot for extensively, which is just this, you know, being very clear that the software update both. Quite sure what happened there. Sorry about that. A little uh, webinar software had a little glitch. So I think the last thing you saw was the uh, was the fight was the previous example of, of performance by signal strength. So what you're looking at now is performance by firmware revision. Um, so again, as I explained, hopefully, uh, hopefully you can still hear me. The the our customers often find that they want to very closely monitor the performance of their network just before and after a firmware rollout because they're both looking obviously to make sure that the firmware update actually sticks and, and that devices come back online after the rollout. But generally they've got that process relatively reliable these days. The the other bit they're looking for is the sort of the more subtle point is, is the has the new firmware created the desired change in performance? I mean, they're deploying a new firmware for a reason. It's adding some functionality. It's it's adding a, uh, uh, a you know security fix, or it's adding some new feature. Um, and what they're looking for is to ensure that that new performance is as they expect, but also that there's no unexpected side effects. Um, and so a very close monitoring of performance around firmware update is definitely a, a key part of what our customers are doing. So here we can see, um, again, where we've where we've broken out that uptime percentage by, in this case, uh, the software version. And and what we can see, we can see a uh, a relationship here in terms of the the darkness of the bar again shows us the statistical relevance. So that gives us a, a clue as to how many devices have reached that firmware. Um, what we can also see is broadly, not exclusively, but broadly, the correct kind of graph, which is a that generally uh, firmware, uh, new firmware tends to be more reliable. Certain amount of interpretation required here, because often if devices go long term offline or they just sort of fall off the network or something, then obviously they will tend to get stuck on an older firmware, so they'll sit there. Uh, and produce uh, and produce low low results. But what we can see is that you know they have got a significant number of devices migrated to newer firmwares, and those and that has a higher level of performance than the than the the, the sort of effectively their most common uh, num uh, firmware version right now. Uh, and so again, actionable insights. You know, even at this point, we can expect. You know, something like a 10% bump in up in a state uptime once they've completed the firmware rollout. Um, you know, again, so not just sort of you know even early on here with a relatively small number of devices posted up with the new firmware, we're already at the point where we we can expect uh, you know better firmware. We can also see these outliers where you know uh, a, a, a particular firmware didn't go well. So in that situation, obviously you can you can stop posting it. You can, you know, uh, you can, you can halt the update process until until such time as the issue is resolved. So this, this is another very common use case for for device for device pilot. The idea of extremely close monitoring of performance both before and after firmware update to allow customers to you know get a very clear understanding. As I say, more of our customers are doing more frequent firmware updates, especially. Especially in the relatively early stages of their of their device lifecycle, with a with, with a sort of with a few thousand devices rather than a few million, you know, obviously at some later point, one would expect the frequency of firmware update to slow down as the sort of as the proposition and the and the code stabilizes and matures. But right now, it's important for growing companies to be able to to you know keep their software supple and and keep these things being updated and not get stuck with uh, with sort of legacy devices reporting in the wrong way or performing the wrong way or not having uh, the additional functionality customers need. So um, being able to very clearly monitor this is a key part of making the, the process of being somewhat agile on embedded software 
uh, you know, it's a key part is the monitoring, the very close monitoring of stuff uh, as you're rolling it out. It's a key part of, of making that happen. So thank you for your time today. I'm just going to do a quick uh, quick update uh, of, of what we've talked about. So service assurance and IoT is, yes, obviously about monitoring your performance. Um, but you know, there are some key reasons why you know, it's not just about telling you what the top level performance is, although of course that's a key part, that's where you must start. But it's also about generating these actions, these, these specific insights and these specific actionable points you can, you can take to improve your performance. The, the model of service assurance is that you take, you, you start the monitoring process of getting a very clear and accurate picture of your performance, and then you make changes and you see if they improve the performance. And if they do, you keep them and do more of them and broaden them out. And if they don't, then you stop. And ultimately, it's all about you know, driving the quality of your device estate up to a level that's required to sort your business. I mean, to support your business. And different companies will need different levels. I mean, you know, Telco sort of famously got to the sort of five nines level of reliability. I mean, I like to say, you know, one nine is a, a good day in IoT. Um, there's, you know, it's some time before estates of uh, of small embedded devices are going to get to five nines and they probably don't need to get to five nines, but they do need to get to something, you know, one nine, two nine, maybe three. I mean, they, they need to get to some level and that, and they need to do that at a cost that is manageable for the, for the people operating them. Um, so the ability to get these network wide views, these estate wide views of performance and drill right down to root cause and to see the individual telemetry and time series data, that's, that's important. And then this sort of intermediary idea of cohort analysis of being able to splice and dice the performance by by metadata stuff like customer and, and telemetry ideas like like uh, like signal strength allows you to understand your performance in such a way as you can make changes to improve it. And you know, just understanding it's nice, but being able to change it to make it better is the is the key point. And obviously, you know, the 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 point of using device pilot is to is to is to get all this data in and to be able to improve your performance uh, with at, at, with as little effort and, and cost as possible um and so you know that's that's really what uh, what we see uh, service assurance in iot is all about okay well thank you for your time today uh that concludes the webinar um, uh, I believe uh, if you're online, you'll get uh, a follow-up email with a recording. And uh, thank you for your time.